So today we have a fun day. We're going to be looking at what we're going to be having on the farm in 20 years. We're at the Farm Progress Show, which is basically the largest farm show in the United States of America. So we're going to walk around and see what new technologies are coming into place, what new equipment. It sounds like there's a lot of really cool stuff. And there's a lot of people that come to this thing. And we forgot sunscreen, so... <laughs> oh boy. So the Farm Progress Show is basically anybody who's anybody in agriculture. It has a booth here. You can walk around and you can kind of see what's new. We're actually here with Titan Tire this year. So we have our 340 Magnum sitting over there. And then we got some pretty interesting stuff in this booth. We have the new Big Bud, the 700. I know absolutely nothing about it other than it's brand new and I guess Big Bud is back. Our tractor, nice beautiful picture of me. Does it, did the Photoshop work good? <laughs> oh, look at that, they got everything we got that has tight tires on it. The 340, the 1400s, and the 1100s, then our sprayer with the fats and the skinnies, and that's John Deere. Look at that. Wait, what is this? Cornhole with the corn stars. I did not sign up for playing <laughs> cornhole. Four throws for five bucks. Throw against any member of the corn star family for your chance to win an autographed limited edition Titan Farm Progress hat. I did not agree to this. <laughs> I'm terrible at cornhole. They need Cooper to do it because he's the, the good why one. I asked if you were ready for cornhole. I was questioning that. Like, I would have been training had I yes. known this. And this is the new big bud. This thing is ginormous. Holy cow. Oh, man, I, <laughs> I was looking through the camera. I didn't realize how big that was. Can't even see you. <laughs> Stop. So the big bud, that tractor right there in that picture, is the largest tractor in the world. It's like 26 and a half feet wide. That's a big bud, 747. This is the 700, which is their new one. Okay, what do you know about this thing? So the, the whole thing about the 700 is uh, it's it's for uh, right to repair type stuff. So, you know, these days the tractors are so complicated that you have to actually tear the tractor apart just to get to the motor. This thing, there's six bolts. That, that hood folds open. The cab pulled back, there's six bolts. When the hood folds open now, it's an awning that you can camp Pretty under. much, yeah, yeah. And so six bolts and you can pull the entire transmission and motor out and work on it right there in the shop. Really? Yeah, so it's, if you look at this, there's, you can literally look from the back end to the front end, there's just nothing in there. It's just, it's just simple. Can you get any cab configuration on it, is that true? Yep, so he's working with uh, a different one. So if you're a, a case cab guy or a John Deere cab guy, it's. Uh, universal mounts and they, they fold them back and uh, whatever electronics you want to put into it, your GPS or whatever, again, it's ultimately uh, integrated. It's a jack of all trades, it easy to is. work on. And you don't have to run deaf. No deaf? Why? It's well, over 700 horsepower. So anything over 700 horsepower, well, 720, you don't have to run deaf. So the, the major manufacturers, uh, you know, they use smaller motors and they, they wind them up where he's running a bigger motor and more or less idling it. It's got a lot more, and you can tune this up a lot, but you keep it right at that 700, 720 horsepower. Yeah, right, I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Basically, we're just bringing as much awareness to agriculture as we can, and I'm just here kind of hanging out and seeing what we're going to be running on our farm in 20 years. That's the way we like to look at it, because everything here is like a million dollars. You have a passion for helping FSA. That's kind of what you're doing here at the Titan booth, right? Is that, did I hear correctly, if you make a donation, you're going to take a little, maybe, cornhole challenge? I didn't know anything about this cornhole thing, but <laughs> yes, we're helping with the FFA. And it's so kinda... it's cornhole not your game? My brother's excellent at cornhole. I'm terrible. <laughs> but it's kind of funny because I didn't have FFA when I was in school. My school didn't offer it. Isn't. So after I graduated, they did. So I don't know much about it. I've been asking FFA kids what they do and what they've been learning. And it's a really cool thing. I'm in awe of your vision here. I, I like it. Well, the skid system, the slide out, everything about this tractor is something we've been doing since the first tractor built in 69. So this isn't a one-off thing. So what happened? You built big buds, stopped, now we're coming back, why? That's well, a really good question and it's an insightful question that most people don't ask. So, you know that 747 I built in 77? Yep. They were, I was the first ones in the, ag industry, in the ag industry to use a power shifter, everybody else was standard shift. 
I was so enamored with that transmission because I could set the lockup point. It was used in the mines, okay? And I went with that transmission. And after I ordered the transmission, I was building 120 tractors. I pre-sold 91 of the 120. And then Twin Disc called me, building that big transmission. They ran into some plant problems, and I never received any transmissions from the day I was supposed to get my first 10, which was 10 a month, 120 that year. I never got any transmissions for 11 months. Oh no. I laid off my 130 some people. I waited until the transmissions arrived. Nobody wanted to buy the last big white tractor. I went into chapter 11. It took me three and a half years to sell off that production that was already pre-sold. <coughs> and because that really hurt us, I went into the rebuild business. And between you and me, even though that was a real slap in the face and shut down my company, I went into the rebuild business. The rebuild business taught me more than ever in the manufacturing business. Manufacturing, if you think about it, you build a new frame, buy all new components, you put them in there, send it down the road, right? In the rebuild business, you better be pretty good on engines, you better be pretty good on transmissions, you better be able to build your own wiring harnesses, and if they pick a different engine, different transmission, you gotta use all new stuff. <coughs> and so I've been a rebuilder for 30 years, and I'm pretty savvy, you name the engine, and I probably have used it in one of my tractors. I got some I really like, and I got some I really don't like. But at the end of the day, the ones I really didn't like, we switched them out into engines we really turned out really do like, and those tractors are still running. Out. So, because I've been a rebuilder, I'm pretty knowledgeable about components. I'm also fairly knowledgeable about the way not to build a tractor. And I think the ag industry has lost its way and trying to control the parts service business and not building the very best product for our farmers. And I decided to build this tractor just like I built the other tractors to prove that you could still build a real simple, tough, generic tractor. That was the gentleman who made the new Big Bud tractor. And I apologize, we did terrible filming today. We got talking and all of a sudden today is over. <laughs> Where are we eating at? Hooter. Or Wrangler, Mexican <laughs> girl or something. Oh, thanks for holding the door, Kim. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, had, I was literally thinking about something else. Day two of the farm show. We're going to try to do a lot better job of actually getting around the show to see what's there today. So we got a little dewy here last night. We got some water. How do you feel? I feel great. I'm ready for the day. It was smart. We got sunscreen I today. I did, and we got yogurt. SPF 100, really. I don't know if it actually works. <laughs> we'll see. How do you feel today, Dad? I feel really good. It's it's just, it's fun being down here. But I was dragging a little bit when I got up this morning, I can't lie, I forgot to set my alarm clock and still woke up on time, but it was like. <sighs> hey, what time did you end up going to bed last night? Good night. Oh man, everybody quit early. 9.30? Early? You guys went to bed at what, eight? No, it was like 9.30. The trick to these places, you just gotta look like you were supposed to be there. Yay, look at this 24 footer. Dad, how'd you like this? The only thing that would make it a little better if it had a cab enclosed, well, enclosed cab, air conditioning, it had air conditioning, and seated, cooled seats, heated seats. You guys could go 100 miles an hour, was an 18 speed, could tow 47,000 pounds. In all honesty, what you'd pay for that, you might as well just buy a loader. Oh, I love your channel. I think this thing is an irrigator. It's a autonomous irrigator. Hook up a line to it with a hose and then it drives and it waters your crops. A big old jack right here. You put it underneath the sprayer, goes right into the frame and lift it right up. Basically, we bolt this onto the back of the combine harvester. Uh, we take the chaff that comes off the sieves uh, and then flows into our hopper here. We distribute that with the auger. Uh, it pushes it into a mill that's located on each side of the, uh, the uh, IHSD. Uh, and we process all of the chaff. Uh, the chaff contains uh, weed seeds. Particularly, we're targeting herbicide-resistant weed seeds. 
uh, we process those and then throw those back out onto the ground. We spread them back across the width of the uh, the boom, and we have got inert organic material back in the field where you would once be spreading wheat seeds. So that's it in a nutshell. So this works with corn and soybeans. This works in corn and soybeans. Uh, we have good results targeting what sort of combines you guys run. I need to grab one. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we have good results targeting weed, uh, weed seed species, so uh, for example, whoa, whoa, come here. So example, yeah, we get basically 99% up, upwards of kill rate in, across all of your common weeds here in the US. Uh, this table has been done by uh, University of Arkansas to show the kill rate uh, that we can uh, achieve using the HSD. Um, that's the one we need and we don't have any. Okay. Uh, well, we've got that in in rice, uh, rice chaff, and it's easier to kill seeds in, uh, in soy than it is in Next rice. Year. Yeah, Next year. Yeah. Imagine oh, what that number sure. is. It's going to be around 90%, uh, 99%. Uh, so the options that we've got with this machine, we've basically got this auger that's uh, traveling in the middle, so we have a built-in stone trap, so we can release that stone trap and pull through any foreign, foreign material that's uh, landed at, uh, here into the, into the hopper. So we see uh, bolts, we see retractable fingers, we see horseshoes, we see, see all sorts of things that get pulled up from the ground and go through the cold one. Uh, so that's to get bypassed, uh, bypassed the auger, we catch those in the stone trap and release that. So that stops things going into the mills and destroying the mills. Oh, okay. Yeah, so two rows of rotating bars and three rows of stationary bars uh, here in the mills. Uh, and the we're not trying to crush or grind, we're just trying to hit them really hard with our spinning bars. Uh, and then the spinning bars provide an impetus throw them into those stationary bars. Uh, these mills are patented and the pattern is to, that we keep the material in the mills long enough to uh, get at least four impacts on every particle that's running through that mill. So every weed seed's going to get a hard slap four times and that's enough to get a, a kill rate. So, so it basically hits hours. the seed and cracks it so yeah. now it's As soon as it's cracked it's non-viable, it gets spread back out on the ground, it won't germinate. That's the minimum damage that we're going to do to it. As you progress through the, the season, as things dry out, you're basically turning turning those weed seeds to powder. What's one of these run? Uh, so next year we'll be listing these about 70, 70. I'm going to say 69 because you guys understand me better when I say it that way. Uh, about $69,000. Uh, we're going to show special on cases at the moment are about 58, but you can talk to Ty Tyler and probably screw him down a little bit. I am a bona fide NASCAR driver right now. Well, one thing led to another and I got talking a lot to a lot of people and all of a sudden the show is done. Everyone's starting to pack things up now. I just wanted to talk about this tractor here for a little bit. The guy who made it was here, and he was giving us a bunch of information about this thing. Sounds like it's supposed to have everything fully unlocked for technology, and basically any part you can get over the counter at any common parts store. Sounds like it's gonna take about a week to get our 340 home. They have to take my friend Brian farming videos. Fent home first, his is outfitted with 1400s on the back, 1100s on the front. I don't know when Welker's big brute is going to be brought back to Montana. So that's going to Ohio, that's going to Montana. I don't know where that's going to, probably Montana. And then our tractor behind it, somewhere back there is going to Iowa. It's a crazy chaotic jumble of people here right now. Everybody tries to get out as fast as they possibly can, but we had a good show. I got a lot of sun. Thank goodness for SPF 100 ice. SPF 100 ice cream. SPF 100 sunscreen. Now we have a five and a half hour drive home. I love you. Five and a half hour drive. Well, if you're driving. Two hours. <laughs> we ended up getting back from the Farm Progress show uh, about 10.30 last night. Got some good sleep, slept in a little bit. We are fully recharged, ready to rock and roll. And now we got Brandon from Champion Seed just pulling in. We're going to go look at some fields. Good morning. Sorry for making you wait. Good to see you. You too. Oh, <laughs> Breaking my hand there. Got that dad strength yep. going. Where did this wind come from? Brandon, how long have you been at Champion Seed now? Going on eight years. What's your favorite hybrid? Right now in the lineup, I really like that 62B21. Well, we're at 58A21 right now. This is our high management plot. We got the intercrop right beside it, and we got control on the other side. So we're gonna check all three of these first. We do have your favorite hybrid, but it's down yep. the road. All right. We gotta get off these end rows a little bit because it's kind of worked up right here, so it's not the no-till spot. Ah, what happened here? 
Brandon and I shucked back 10 different ears. So we can see we got quite the difference in these ears just from plant to plant. So we definitely have some variability. That one's a lot higher up. We got a little guy here. This one we think maybe had some pollination issues. So maybe didn't quite get fully pollinated. And then these ones here, having these little baby kernels on the top, these will amount to nothing. Must have got nice and hot, dry. The plant ended up just aborting those. And then we got other ones that went all the way right to the tip. Those are solid, solid ears. Our, our field actually doesn't, we don't really have any of these at all. We had to look really hard for these. Our, our whole field looks like this. That's our story and we're sticking to it. The lower canopy out in this particular spot, this was a high management, so we have two passes of fungicide on this, but we definitely have some leaves dropping down here, looking for disease on them. We have some nutrient deficiencies we can see with this yellow stripe. But as for tar spot, those little guys right there. That might be some real early gray leaf spot right there. Not very big lesions, but oh. kind of those long rectangles. The other thing I'm noticing is, you know, that's kind of lower in the canopy where there's more shade. These leaves aren't contributing quite as heavily to the to finishing out these ears as much as the upper canopy. and. The top leaves really look clean. It's just starting to see minimal disease pressure down here below the ear. So nothing too concerning. That's expected yet. this time of exactly. year. Exactly. Yep. As our fungicide residuals start to wear off here into the late portion of grain fill, kind of tend to see that. Every single double ear we had in this field, it, they all look like this. They basically shriveled down to nothing. So we're looking at single ear per plant. One of the characteristics of Champion 58A21, corn is kind of like humans. Different types of humans have different characteristics to them. The characteristic of this one, big old block ear. I cannot wrap my fingers around it. So this thing is thick, but it doesn't get super long and it's not like a 62 pound test weight corn. Yeah, it'll be upper 50s, but yeah, we can kind of see just a little bit what I'd call a rougher cap there on the top of the kernels. So. The cap being the dent? Yeah. So not that real smooth textured. Um, maybe just kind of shrivels up a little bit, but just really consistent hybrid, uh, you know, ear to ear. We got a little bit of variability, but not much. And uh, yeah, for the most part, filled to the tip really well. 58A21 has been our best yielding hybrid for the last three seasons. So are we going to get year number four out of it? We'll see. Hungry, hungry caterpillar. Next part of the field we're in is the one and one. So we got a row of soybeans right underneath of us. And we got a row of corn, a row of soybeans. It's all the way through. We got a down and back. So 120 feet of it. The beans, well, we'll just say that there's not a lot of them on here, but oh my goodness, those things are chubby. Big beans. And then this corn, this is a 52,000 population right here. So for 52,000 pop, those are actually some pretty decent ears. Let's take the smallest one and yield calculate it. That guy? Yeah, this guy. Corn kernels will always be in pairs of two. You'll always have an even number around. And what we see here is we had more kernels around here at the bottom, and then we must've hit stress right around this, this layer here in that corn plant decided it wouldn't be able to support this high number of kernels around so it shrunk it up so up top here we're getting two four six eight ten twelve around and down here we're getting 16 around so we started at 16 and we shrunk down up top 32 kernels long and we see here we do have some ear feeding um this this time of year we'll get some caterpillars basically that get in there under the husk and, and chew on the kernels but we do have a couple new traits we'll talk about later on that can actually uh, protect the corn plant from that. So what's 12 times, let's say 12 times 30, yeah. times 52. 208. That's, that's using 90,000 kernels okay. per bushel. Which we should get heavier because we're getting a lot more sunlight and that is the smallest ear yep. in this pack. When I put nitrogen on this corn, I did not have the ability to band it. So these soybeans got nitrogen as well. And when we give nitrogen to soybeans that are a legume that are supposed to make their own nitrogen from the soil and from the air, they get lazy because it basically tells them, oh, you don't need to make your own nitrogen. So these are falling over in here. Hopefully we don't see this as much and the wider row configurations, but we knew we weren't going to get a lot of sunlight in here because these corn plants have just absolutely just brawled out and shaded everything out. So makes sense why we don't have a lot of pods, but they're falling over, I believe, because of all the excess nitrogen they got. So this is the six rows of corn, six rows of beans. This should be a lot different. Just looking at these beans already, 
big difference. Right off the bat, first thing I'm noticing with the corn in the, well, in the inner crop in general is we do not have nearly the dent. These are hardly dimpled at all towards the top of the plant. They don't even really have a dent in them at all. So these are going to be a lot heavier kernels than the ones that have a bigger dent. But the ears do look smaller in this, but we're also at a 52,000 population instead of a 32,000 population. So even though they're smaller, we're getting more yield because there's a lot more of them. We did have some heat stress in this though. I'm actually kind of surprised to see this being so close to the soybeans being right over here that heat should have been able to get out right away. But we have a bunch of leaves that have got hit pretty hard and they're just bloop. And then another thing that's interesting, this is the south row of corn and then this is the north side. The south gets hit with a little bit more sunlight during the violent parts of the day. We are definitely seeing some more drought stress. We can see some ears that are actually dropped over there and a lot more brown in the plants than on the north edge of the corn rows that are a little bit more shaded, maybe retain that moisture a little bit better. So that's kind of interesting. These beans on the six and six, we do have some weed pressure in there. That's water hemp poking up. Definitely not as lazy and significantly more bean pods. There we go. A lot more pods on that guy. We have an experiment that could go really good or could go really bad. We have a 116 day hybrid behind us, which is an extra full season for us. We actually have two different hybrids in this field. We have a 114 day, which is a little more green right now, and the 116 day, which is a little lighter, which this is interesting. I mean, color is kind of cosmetic at this point, so we'll see. We'll rock right on the split. Man, that is noticeable. Wow, look at that. Yeah. So definitely seeing a little bit more tar spot here. Oh, wow. Uh, kind of both hybrids have bigger spores and more of them so um i think the previous fields we've been in maybe got a couple more passes now look of at that so yeah this only got a single pass of fungicide that's a lot of tar spot on that yeah. leaf wow we're seeing it higher up in the canopy too so potential to maybe yeah that uh, prevent was, some photosynthesis here later in the green field a little bit more airborne they both have it though this one has like bigger pieces though and then this other hybrid this 114 oh, day is Level specs. So I think when uh, we did a delivery video of the seed, we're kind of going hybrid by hybrid. And uh, last winter, Cole told me he wanted a hybrid with really high test weight. And I told him this is the hybrid that doesn't dent. And uh, <laughs> I wasn't lying. This one just puts on just the most microscopic dent you've seen and has some really, really high, heavy test weight. Wow, there is no dent in that, is there? Yeah. Just for dent reference, this is the 114 day right next to it. And then we got the 116 day. <laughs> that's a lot of difference. Most tar spot. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a lot. We got it all the way up the canopy too. We don't want it in the top leaves especially. That's no bueno. Planter performance looks pretty good though. These ears are all pretty much on the same height, which is good. This was done with the white planter. Pretty even too, not a lot of little doinkers. Like this guy, he got pulled back a little bit, but that's a big old ear. He had a little bit of pullback. Gotta figure out how to get them all like this. That's what we want. What's the secret? Still working on it. I think we're, we're getting there on- You're not supposed to say here. that. You're supposed to say plant champion. Plant champion, well, that's true. Let's go back, edit that out. <laughs> Next up, we got champion 57A23. Is that right? This yep. was new last year? Yep. 107 day. So he's kind of a longer ear. Yeah, a little bit more of a kind of a long slender ear. Um, puts on kind of a wider fat kernel. I see Brandon is a typical farmer. You got to include all the ears here, Brandon. There we go. A little bit of tip back on that one. We got a little drive. Yeah. Boarded some. Those other ones. Filled out nicely to the tip. Just about half milk line. A little over. Yeah. A little under. It depends yeah, on the kernel. The backside usually gives you a little better. Oh, there you go. It's a thick cob. Yeah. One pass of fungicide on here. Yes. Yep. One pass of fungicide. Some tar spot. Pretty good. A lot of tar spot right there. A little bit of water hint pressure in this one. I don't know if these will seed out or not, probably, because they're little boogers. Yeah, bracer it's came out nicely and let's get it anchored down. Kind of seeing the same. I'm just getting a little bit dry here on these bottom leaves and with the lack of rain seeing just a little bit of could have used a little bit more water to bring the nutrients into the plant but all in all it's everything looks good still looks strong healthy stock and 
Besides tar spot. Ooh, what do we got here? Some phosphorus showing up. And the buildup of sugars can give you that purple color in the leaf. So how they make Indian corn? Is Indian corn sweet? Purple? I guess I've never tried to eat it. I honestly don't know. I've never seen this before. I'll have to do some research. Yeah, we got some tar spot. Look at that sunshine through. Yeah. Quite a bit. And this did get a fungicide. Adds blonde slash brown silk. Look at all those little moisture drops in there. Just trapped inside the silk. It's kind of amazing that more disease and mold and stuff doesn't develop if that's in there all the time when it's it literally hasn't rained for like two weeks. Yep. Yeah, that's why one of the things we look for in a hybrid is that when it gets to uh, gets closer to black layer, that husk opens up and kind of allows that all to, to dry out to prevent some of those ear rots. But yeah, it is crazy with in a growing season like this where we've had you know minimal moisture kind of relative to a normal growing season how. Just some heavy dews and a couple tenths of rain here and there is enough to keep these plants going. And they do a great job of filtering the rainfall down to the base of the plant and even things like that where the husks are able to contain a lot of that moisture right there in the ear. I'd say this 107 day is some of the best stuff we've looked at yeah. so far. Those oh, are some really nice ears. Brandon forgot to fill his truck up with gas. So naturally, when we come into town, we couldn't forget the ice cream. Yours is probably freezer burnt. Next up, we got Champion 61 A22. It's a little fascinating. We got real nice green plants, just taking a couple steps forward, and all of a sudden, boom. I don't know if we're in a little bit of a dry area. There's a little disease right here. Yeah, we There's definitely tar, have some tar spot. spot. Definitely have some more rolled leaves, which would indicate some, some heat and drought stress. It's just kind of a little pocket, and then as we go up the hill again, it gets a lot better. Yeah, these leaves are crispy high up. Yeah. Ears are a lot smaller here, too. Decent length, filled out to the tip nicely, but just... Skinny. Pretty long and skinny. About a tar spot in this one, too. Maybe a little bit of pollination stress here on the tips. and I think it was really warm when this was pollinating, and it was pretty dry then, too. So it just pollinated kind of at a poor time, I think. Yep. And not a lot of moisture since then. We just haven't got quite the kernel depth on some of these later. Yeah, that, oh, wow. That feels a lot lighter. Yep. Definitely a lot more tip back in this field. We have not been seeing this in any other fields nearly this bad. Or maybe out of 10 plants, you have one or two with it. But here, it's pretty much every single one. This is a high management part of the field, too. So this has been hit with a double fungicide. And we have a fair amount of tar spot on this. So that's not exactly ideal for the... Management that we have given it, look at that. That just looks like a leopard. So when we get to the other parts of the field that are not high management, it's going to be interesting to see how that is too. You did it again, Brandon. You got to pick these ones as well. These are corn <laughs> people too. We have about 500 acres of champion corn. And so Brandon and I went and looked at every single number. I think the 107 day looks the best. The 107 day is planted about four miles that way four miles that way did not get hit with the wind that everything two miles that way did so i mean that kind of naturally makes sense but from a tar spot perspective and from a crop looking a little bit getting crispy because of the dry and the heat over there looks better than over here i am glad that we planted our crops in three different groups because first grouping got hit with an early rain and that had crusting so our full stand is not necessarily there and then second grouping looks the best and then third grouping we had the best planting conditions but unfortunately we got hit with some nice heat and dryness as they were pollinating out and so that's kind of where we're seeing the tip back on those plants so we definitely spread our eggs into multiple baskets by planting in three different windows which i'm fortunate of because if we planted everything in one we would probably have that pull back on every single plant, which is what we don't want. We got done at perfect timing because I just got a call from dad. I got Cooper's hay trailer behind me. So we're gonna follow dad around and we're gonna go pick up some hay bales. Ah, oh, yeah, we got the shorts and the boots. Look at that beautiful 72 inch bale we got up on the loader right now. It's got some nice brome grass in it with some something else and it's probably not too stimmy. It might be a little bit stimmy because it's been pretty dry around here. Can I get a hundred dollar bill? Anybody bid a hundred dollar bill? Would you bid a hundred dollar bill? Anybody bid a hundred dollar bill now? Ha! 115, now 115 dollar, 115 dollar bill. Anybody bid a hundred and fifteen dollar now? 115 dollar now, 120. Now 125, now 125, 130, 130, 135. Oh, look at that. Textbook execution, Dad. 
trick is we got two bales here. We gotta be able to get them pushed far enough forward so that way we're over the axle. Otherwise, we got a bale lever back here pushing on the trailer like this and then you don't have a lot of back end weight on the truck, which is not good. He's got the second one loaded. Oh boy, we're gonna have some negative tongue weight. This is Cooper's hay bale trailer. I guess he bought it with another neighbor. They went 50-50 on a trailer. They use it for hay, Cooper uses it for hay, then that way they both don't have a bunch of money invested in individual trailers because they don't use it all the time just when they're out picking up bales. And so Cooper usually goes, helps him do hay stuff. And then he'll let Cooper use some of his hay stuff sometimes. So it works pretty good, but that's the story on this trailer. Pro series cattlemen. This one's kind of cool because you grab the lever on the side and you're able to flip this out and it's a big handle. And when it's straight out, you push down on, or actually you push into it and then the trailer will flip over and it'll dump the bales off. I'll have to be careful. I don't know if there's a lot of weight on the truck or not. I know, I just realized that too. Yeah, it should be okay. I mean, we're pretty well flat. Just take it easy. Just. It might be pretty balanced too, I don't know. Good news is we're going right there. Over your shoulder. Oh, we're going over there. Coop's got this building all full of hay over here at Kristen and Rusty's. Well, he's got a gap here, obviously. And then he's got a whole bunch of bales over there that he's got to get put away. What's up, chicken? <laughs> here we go, we just push. There we go. Now, we have a really important job at the big machine shed. In front of the John Deere 4840 and in front of the Freightliner with the sprayer trailer on it, as well as in front of the combine and in front of the backhoe and in front of the backhoe trailer and in front of the white semi that is pulling the backhoe trailer. Plus behind the bean head, we have our corn head all folded up. We are selling our corn head and a gentleman is going to come look at it tomorrow. So we're gonna have to pull all this stuff out, get it hooked up to the combine, get it pulled outside, get everything hooked up on it, get it unfolded and ready for the guy to come look at it. Please don't be dead. Now oh, you turd. Do, 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 do. Black on red and red on black. Ooh. Hey. One down. Probably start this cemetery trailer. Oh man. Ah, it smells like a used hotel room. With a hint of the pool. You're dead too. Numero dos. Ah, that's a pretty sky right now. Numero tres. Hey, Dad showed up. Oh no, we have a blinking light. What are we gonna do? Did it go away? Let's try it. Hey, right, look at that. All right, we're ready. Come here, little bean head. Gotta be careful beside that semi-trailer there. Bar sticks out the front of the bean head just enough. We don't want to catch it on the edge of that trailer because we only have a couple inches clearance between and that would be a lot of bendy, bendy, breaky, breaky. All right, we should have a clear shot right to the corn head now. I think dad wants to pull the two semis out as well, or at least the one that's tucked behind in the back because he needs to uh, put new tires on it and new brakes. So it needs to go down to the other shop. Now, hopefully you didn't die. Oh, battery, please don't be dead. Please don't be dead. Moment of truth. Yes. Mm, turn on the lights so we can see. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Tight fit. Tight, tight, tight fit. Okay, I'm gonna need both hands here. I think we got it. We're getting an error zero code for whatever reason. We're trying to unfold it, but it's not letting us do anything. We're gonna do the old fashioned, unplug it, plug it back in, hopefully that works. <laughs> Cooper's wrenching on something right there, I don't know what. Now he's going to this side. Whoa. Okay, head, let's turn on. Okay, everything 
everything seems to be working okay. She's ready to get looked at. We are gonna bring it down, just hit it with the power washer quick, basically get all of that dust from the shed and all the bird feathers and bird poop and stuff off of it. So that way it just looks a little cleaner. Nelly, what are you barking at me for? What are you barking at? We saw what equipment we're gonna be running in 20 years. We gotta to talk to some pretty cool people at the farm show. We had a lot of fun. We scouted crops, we looked at corn, we looked at beans. Some stuff looked better than we expected. Some stuff maybe for the year we've been having, as dry as we've been, we will absolutely take it and we're ready to sell the corn head. So that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.